I'm delighted to be in the studio with Roland Hannacroot. Now, Roland, hello, welcome. Hi, nice to be here. Good. Now, look, um, you have just published a book, The Ten Truths for Raising a Healthy, Bouncy Business. Cracking little book. Um, and I've known that you've been working on this for a little while. Uh, the project probably took a year. Took a year, yeah. OK. So now we're not going to go through the 10 truths right here, right now, because that That's will obviously a great take us a bit too long. And yes, I know that you like to talk, <laughs> and I know you feel very passionate about these topics. Okay. So why don't we go through, say, the, the, the kind of the key three truths that mm. we need to be listening to if we're running a business. So cool. where should we start? Well, they are called the, the 10 truths because I actually believe that they're not, that they're not just the 10 tips. They're 10 truths. And the three, but the three first ones, I think you need to, you, you've just got to get right, right. because otherwise it's just not going to go anywhere. Otherwise you won't get to the other seven. No, exactly. You won't yeah, be around. Right. You need to, first of all, you need to know why the business actually exists. What's the point of this business? If you've got a carpet cleaning business, why does your carpet cleaning business exist? Okay. Um, if, you know, any kind of business, there's lots of other businesses that ostensibly have the same label, but they don't actually do the same thing. Okay, so it's not enough people. to say uh, my business exists because I need to earn money from it. That's that's nowhere near enough, is it? Uh, well, you do have to earn money from it, right. but nobody else cares. No. Why? <laughs> you know, it's, a, um, it's great to have a business because you want to earn money off it, but yeah. if you actually want to sell something, yeah. um, people need to understand why they would want to buy okay. from you. So why they would want to? Why does this business exist, and importantly, why should anybody care that it exists? Exactly. So. That's, that's truth number one. Okay. Um, Where to next? Number two. Number two, uh, people always say you need to delegate, and that's true. You do need to yeah. delegate. Yeah. And um, as uh, Michael Gerber, who you've previously interviewed as well, yeah. a famous the guru the, the of e all, man. the e-myth man, yeah. um, said you need to delegate, not abdicate. And the yeah. difference is that you, abdicating is like, this is also hard. Oh, you, you do yes. it. Yeah. All right? And th that's classically what everybody does with the bookkeeper. Um, at some point they go, Right, we need to I book it. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, someone just takes, oh, someone take, take, it, take it off me, right? Okay. And then, oh, that's it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, right. and as Michael Gerber also says, he has writes great examples in the e -myth about six months later, the business doesn't exist anymore because okay. as the owner, you need to keep control of the important things that matter even if you, when you delegate. So right. whether it's the admin, whether it's the carpentry, whether it's the, the carpet laying, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you need to delegate with control. So you need to keep your finger on the pulse. Okay. You need to... And in order, to, yeah. I guess, to delegate with control mm. is whoever we delegate to needs to know precisely what's expected. Yeah, of them. exactly. And so, then you get into this whole thing: how do you, how do you, how do you delegate? What? Are, and there's lots of steps in that, and all that sure. sort of stuff. But the, but and the basic truth is, you, if you, yeah, there's some, yeah, there's lots of stuff in the book. Yeah. It's a very good book. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, but the basic concept is, you need to get your head around this thing about delegating without. W with loose, with keeping control, so yeah. that's okay. that's two. keeping your finger on the pulse. That's number All right. two. Number three, valuing your own time, is, uh, valuing your own time as the business owner, as the as the person who who has the responsibility for the whole of the business. Whether it's a tiny little business, a flying solo, or yep. but it's not just you don't ha just have responsibility for the for that the output of that business. So right. you don't just have the responsibility for laying the carpet in the uh, you in the also carpet business, yeah. in the carpet laying business mm -hmm. you also have the responsibility for um, uh, the finances and the people that work there and uh, the suppliers and the contractors and, and you know whatever so you have there's lots of other responsibilities you have to um, you have to take on as a business owner yeah. as well as the growth of the business the future yeah. of the business and and how you might get out of it at one point so there's another but so there's there's lots of responsibilities that the person who owns the business has that the carpet layer doesn't. Yeah. And so it's about valuing your own time in that, in that respect. So it's constantly asking yourself, is this five minutes, minute, minutes that I'm spending at this moment the best use of my time oh, okay. as a business so owner? looking at where you spend your time and are you yeah. focusing on the, on the main issues of your business? Yes, and letting go of this, and letting go of this concept that um, it's a big topic, but uh, I could <laughs> sometimes referred to it as the seduction of the hammer. I'll try and do this quick enough. Seduction of the hammer. Of the hammer. If you're a, if you're the gun carpenter, you okay. are you are you are it. Okay. Then when there's a nail sticking up somewhere, and you grab your hammer, your S wing, and you go whack, and the nail's gone, and everybody around you goes, "Wow, you're hot," and you go, "Yeah, I'm pretty hot." Yeah. Aren't I? And then, um, but then you start your business on the fact, that, based on the fact that you're so good at what you do. Yeah. Um, and it goes great, but at some point there's nails sticking up and you want to go and grab your hammer and go whack because you, you, you do that twice as quick as anybody else. Yeah. 
but you have to resist that temptation. Because yeah. the minute you do it, you're undermining the, the people right. that you've delegated to. So what's, what happens is you need to get the guy that wor that's working for you to go and say, go and nick, whack that nail. Yeah. And he goes, whack, whack, he has to get, hit it twice. And then what you have to do is you go, very well done. Well, you all, the, all the time you know that you could have done it in one whack. Yeah. And so you have to, that's the, well, it's the seduction of the hammer. It's the seduction of trying to pick up this hammer. Yeah. And suddenly what happens prior to... Um, to having an employee who you need to encourage to hit that nail, yeah. you got all the kudos and all the your self worth, your sense of who oh, you yeah, are in yeah. the world, world from being the guy who whacks that nail so well, okay. and suddenly you don't anymore. Yeah. And so nobody comes and pats you on the back and says, oh, "You're the man." Right. Um, not until you get that island in the Bahamas do yeah. people say, oh, "You're a, <laughs> you're obviously a hot entrepreneur." You know that mm -hmm. takes a while, and so all that time you have to. So that's that's. Valuing your own time and getting out of that mindset of, of, of you have to do it. I've got to do it, yeah. yeah. So. Roland, fantastic. Um, I said at the outset you were passionate about your book, and <laughs> you are. And uh, so you've shared three of the ten, and there's another seven in your book. And if you mm. want to find out more about you, thetentruths.com.au. The yes, thetentruths.com.au. Yes? Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Roland, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me.